Good night, good night. Let me make sure I got the uh, to satisfy my vanity here. Let me make sure the lighting is right. So, um, wanted to come to you with another MGTOW retirement video. Uh, give you a bit of an update and on just some personal stuff because I believe on the one of the on the other side of MGTOW retirement. Uh, other uh, opposite the financial side or right beside the financial side of it is enjoying your retirement or building something that is um, uh, that is enjoyable uh, something that you can actually uh, satisfy your hobby your um, maybe your lust for knowledge um, maybe satisfy uh, an itch that you have for a certain hobby or um, a certain trade or something that you do with your hand woodworking whatsoever or what what whatever it may be um i think with this video it's going to be a little bit longer i will be adding some other parts uh, uh another thing is just adding uh parts about uh, buying a steel metal building um i have not done that yet i am currently looking into it uh, it's going to cost me probably about twenty thousand dollars after everything's said and done for a uh, 30 foot by 41 foot uh steel metal building with like nine foot nine foot tall sides and that's with laying concrete and everything and leveling out the ground um, that will come later on I am looking for just another source of income one of the first things I want to go over as I said is just enjoying um, enjoying your retirement having a place that you can actually of course not just call home but that you actually want to be there you know some people have homes where they always want to go out they always want to do something else um, but having a home where you actually want to be there and actually um, stay in that space and you feel that it's your fortress of solitude, it's your place of peace. And that's a very important thing uh, when it comes to uh, thinking about, hey, where are you going to retire to? Where are you going to live the rest of your life? So one thing I just did recently, um, uh, I found a new path on my property. Uh, you see, you know, one of the old buildings, uh, or you saw one of the last videos um, where I found a hunting shed in my backyard. So that was like pretty cool. I was like, whoa, okay, that's kind of out of nowhere. I did not know it was there. I've been here for about two, two and a half months, uh, made two mortgage payments already, going on to making the third, and I'm just finding stuff out. But that's just how much property I have, um, and that's only on the back two thirds of the property. So there's the other one third, which is about seven acres, that I just, I will never see, um, not anytime soon, unless I start clearing it out. That might happen. Um, one thing I just did is use this laser light to actually um, sight my my um, my red dot out to about oh man, I think I sighted that thing out to about 250 feet or so, and that's just doing it from you know the the mud room here in the house to a point in the property. I me I knew it's about 250 feet because I measured it using Google Maps. Not always accurate, but close enough for what I need to do. Um, that's about, that'll get me close to about a hundred yards or so, which is kind of what you want to do for like an AR-15 for a 308. You want to do a little bit further, probably a hundred yards starting and then have a reticle that can, um, that has the different notches for the bullet drop coefficient, I believe is what they call it. Um, so that's one thing, just enjoying your property, enjoying, um, the place that you call home, your place of peace. Now let's get to the, uh, financial stuff. So first thing, you're getting old, time to work smarter. So this came up because I actually got a job at Lowe's and I worked there for a total of three days before I quit. Um, I worked there for two days and then we had the, um, we had the break for uh, New Year's and then um, there's something going on with my schedule and I went to go check on it uh, one night and then ended up staying because I wasn't on the schedule. But I ended up staying and I worked for about like four or five hours and I felt like really bad. I had one of my tam my tams on here, my tam. Um, that's how you would say it in English. Or uh, in Jamaica you said tam. Um, but I had this, this hat here on or beanie and I was feeling extremely hot. Um, I was kind of just like overheating. I had to take it off. Uh, I just, I had to sit down. I was not feeling well at all. The first night I worked there, I was not, uh, I was worn out. Uh, like the next day I felt like real ache, a lot of aches and pains in my back and stuff like that. I'm a big guy, so there's always that. But it's like, this was just really bad. Second night, I did a lot better. Um, part of it, I think, is because of the shoes that I'm wearing and stuff like that. So 
uh, that's one thing. But then, you know, I had that last and final night where I overheated a little bit. And I said, you know what? You're getting older. Time to work smarter, not harder. It's always been that time or it's been that time for a while. I've always had that or I've had that mindset for quite a long time now. And um, that's why, you know, I ventured into doing businesses Uh, before I ran a computer consulting company, MJ Network Solutions. You know, sir, uh, it's like MJ Network, yeah, Network Solutions. Solutions is in our name. This is my motto. Um, I ran that with my business partner, Jermaine. Uh, my name is Michael. Uh, Jay is Jermaine there. So that's how that all came about. And I did that for 10 years. Um, made some good money off of it. I took that and moved into, uh, or like put that into a salon. That salon pretty much never did well and uh, crashed and burned towards uh, or because of the COVID-19 virus. So that was very sad, but it is what it is on that. Um, I also went through a change myself and I said, hey, I don't really wanna do this anymore. I say all that because in those um, in those businesses and things like that, I was making I was making decent money, especially with the computer consulting. I'd be making 50 to 125, $50 to $125 an hour, depending on the customer. $50 on the low end for home users, $75 is was the average, and then 125 for some of my higher end clients they were a little bit bigger companies and so they could pay that rate. Um, but then you go to Lowe's or I went to Lowe's and I was making 1216. Now that was okay with me because I still have my day job where I do computer I do computer support and um, uh, uh, web development. So with that, you know, I can take that extra money uh, that I was making at Lowe's, which would have been like a little bit under $1,300 a month or so, I believe, after like with my calculations, if they gave me hours and everything like that, working part time. And I would have just put that towards my investments. But the thing is, if you're coming home every day and you're in ache, if you're having aches and pains, and you know, um, you really you have to spend most of that time recuperating and recovering, you can't, you know, do anything else. For instance, uh, during this time, I would have built up my freelance um, my freelance coding business, uh, which I am working on right now in terms of just doing some projects to, you know, get that looking a lot better. Uh, so I can get let my GitHub my uh, make my GitHub look a lot better than it is than it does right now. GitHub is a code repository, somewhat of a social network or social media uh, site or social networking site um, for coders. So building that up I would have done it all in that time or try to do it all in that time. It's very hard. I'm 35. I'm getting old. I'm fat as fuck. I'm trying to lose weight. I've been walking uh, a mile, uh, just about a mile a day now. So that's good around the property. I usually do about two miles back when I was at home. So doing all this and you're looking at it and you're saying, wow, this doesn't really make sense. Why am I putting all this energy into something that's ripping up my body? So you really have to look at what you're doing and find ways to make money um, in your sleep in a sense or make money without having to actively uh, manage it. So that's where you know your stocks, um, your stocks and other investments come in to where you can actually do things like that. If you want, you can take a little bit to take a little bit more risk and um, do kind of like what I did um, and get into cryptocurrencies that money is legit money in a sense uh, it does come from a bank um, that money I have used to actually uh, fund the closing for my home along with selling silver I've talked about that before in other videos so it's something that you can actually look into and really um, uh, you can really utilize and a leverage I really should say and put yourself in a better position so even if um, you know when possible, take money, uh, take money off that table, take some profits and things like that, and then parlay them into other investments, maybe more steady, non-volatile investments or less volatile investments, such as your regular stocks. Even Tesla is a less volatile investment than say Bitcoin or even even Ethereum. So those are the type of things that I'm talking about. Work hard or work smarter, not harder. Um, those are highly risky uh, assets uh, in terms of cryptocurrencies and even stocks. But at the same time, it's possible that you may need to take that risk so that you can actually get um, so you can actually provide for yourself into the future. Next topic, set limits on what you invest in, why you need to stop adding stocks. So 
Um, one thing I will be doing is probably consolidating some of my positions or cutting back on some of my positions. I have about 74 uh, stocks in my, um, my general investing portfolio. They have done very well for me. I have purchased more recently. Um, if I do not cut back totally, uh, what I will be doing is just um, not adding any more. So even if it was like a really good stock, unless it's like a real, unless it's like SpaceX or um, or Starlink, you know, unless it's like a, a Tesla, Elon Musk type company or something like that, I'm not going to try and touch it. I'm not going to chase everything. Um, if I'm going to chase anything or add anything to my portfolio, I'm actually going to cut that down and, and, you know, just replace it with something else. I think I've mentioned it before in other past uh, videos, or maybe it's just another conversation I've had with someone else. But essentially, I have about 74, um, 74 stocks, and I want to cut back on that. The reason why is essentially you're spreading yourself too thin. You're spreading your money too thin, especially if your money is limited. It's no point in having $10, uh, $10 in 100 companies. Why don't you just cut that down to... Um, uh, you know, a hundred dollars in ten companies or something like that. I know that math is totally off. I just came up, I just pulled that out of my ass. So, if you can consolidate that and then just bet on those thoroughbreds, those horses that you know will, um, you know, win a couple races for you in terms of like stock returns and uh and, and things like that, then don't stretch yourself too thin. Don't chase after every company that, oh, wow, I got a great top stock tip from um, this person, that person, so on and so forth. Um, put yourself in a better position. Make your, make sure that you're versatile in some way or sorry, diversified in some way, shape or form. Um, maybe not in not just in the stock market or the general stock market where you get bonds, ETFs and um, just general stocks. Maybe get into cryptocurrencies. Maybe just actually have some money on the side, some dry powder, as they call it. And also um, get into things like precious metals. Uh, I try to stay diversified in all of those. I look at them as all financial instruments. Um, all of those, um, oh, even real estate as well. I just, I don't mention it because it's not something I really want to get into. Um, but if anything, you know, if you could put yourself into some of these um, these different uh, financial vehicles, if you will, just to get you to a better point in your life in terms of your retirement then do so, um, you know, just have a steady growth in terms of or what you want to do is facilitate a steady growth, build a foundation where your, um, your money can grow over time. One thing I might do is actually show a video, um, maybe even in this video, I haven't decided yet, but um, actually do a screen share of uh, the, me tracking some of my finances over the past couple months. Uh, from October 2019 to October 2020 and what I've done with that and then where it's gone, um, where it's coming from and where it's gone. So having that overview so you can see that it's a slow and steady growth. Now, I didn't do it the best way that I could think of in terms of like, say, a Dave Ramsey approach, um, which I totally do love. Um, I just didn't, I, did, I love it, but I just didn't uh, love it enough to do it um, to the T, to the, to the letter. I do have one more debt, which is my uh, my auto loan debt, which I will be paying off. But I'm banking on um, bringing in some extra money. Uh, that was what the Lowe's job was for. So doing things to put yourself in a better position, doing things to put yourself in a better position in the long term for your MGTOW retirement, um, doing things that you can actually enjoy um, now and until the future. Uh, this has been just another video. I may come with another section after this. I'm not exactly sure, but you'll see it if anything. As always, thanks for listening. Peace. All right. So I did decide to come back and actually uh, make another portion of this video. Uh, this is just going to be a quick overview of what I've done with my finances in the past year or so. So if we start here at 10, 19, 90, uh, 2019, um, you could see that, I just want to make sure this is recording in the right area, but yeah, it should be good. Um, you can see that where I started, this green line is my total assets. So that is the, um, that is, that is uh, cryptocurrencies, things I was doing, M1 finance, uh, metals. Uh, precious metals in terms of just silver and then also savings 
um, then you see this red line uh, this is my total debts over that same period of time so now um, around December of 2019 when it which is uh, that's when I got my day job uh, the salon wasn't doing too well and uh, I needed to get some extra income so I went ahead and got a day job pretty much closed down my consultancy um, you know my business partner who also had a day job uh, he's you know he was able to definitely help me out with that and got me into a position that was um, that I'm still at right now uh, I was working my night job as a network, network operations center technician and that was um, somewhat of a dead-end job only because I didn't want to move up so I could have done more but there also wasn't there much there and I was running my computer consultancy uh, for years before years prior so with this I was making I was bringing in about eight grand a month so I was really able to kill a lot of this debt in a short period of time um, when the coronavirus hit which was right about here um, at that point I took advantage of some forbearance programs for um, credit cards I uh, the forbearance programs for um, my auto loan I took a month off of that or I took a month for that I also um, you know what that allowed me to do is free up cash and then just focus on one debt at a time uh, and I was able to pretty much use the debt snowball method um, or just you know focusing on one debt and just knocking them off one after another so on and so forth and that really helped me um, a lot so I do have some more debts that I do have to get off um, but I did I went ahead and purchased a home and uh, I was able to get a really good rate on that I got 2.99 percent uh, interest rate on a two hundred thirteen thousand dollar mortgage for the property that I currently live in in southeast Georgia so as you can see and I don't add the home as an asset here I'm not sure how that, that would even look um, the home itself was 213 grand is what I offered um, and then I put down 60 or six thousand three hundred ninety dollars so the mortgage note is uh, based off of two hundred six thousand dollars and even with that the home was appraised at 213 uh, 230 grand so even before moving in at the 213 without putting anything down I was looking at 17 grand in terms of um, I was looking at 17 grand in terms of equity just walking into the door at the 6390 um, you're looking at 23 grand um, 2390 walking into the door or 23 390 walking into the door um, so six, yeah, okay, cool. My math is right on that. So um, that has not been added to this. I don't really plan on adding to that. I'd like to, uh, I like to uh, track things that are liquid assets that I don't have to sell or that I could sell and still have my home because uh, this is definitely a property I want to protect. And that's what it's all about in terms of MGTOW retirement is just actually putting yourself in a position to where you can actually protect your home, your safe space, uh, whatever you want to call it, your Shangri-La, your Fortress of Solitude, essentially just having a roof over your head and be able to and being able to provide for yourself uh, in the long term because this is a long term. Uh, or you want this to be a long term type thing or situation, uh, aka your life. Uh, we can see here where things dropped. Uh, this was around September. So my valuation of my portfolio or my uh, my entire my assets my total assets dropped, um, and that's simply because I actually had to sell some silver and uh, sell some cryptocurrencies so I can fund the closing for my house. Um, so if we go down uh, down here here in a moment, um, but all these other lines would be things like my American Express card that I actually had, and you could see that fall off here. And then the red line is a BB&T loan that I had for the salon that fell off around September as well. Um, this green line here, that is a credit union loan that I had and that fell off. So you can see where I was just knocking off a lot of this debt. So you see these lines going down here, line going down there, line going down there. While steadily I was actually building a lot in terms of assets and things like that so M1 finance I was investing more where it's making up a larger portion of my actual assets um, same thing with uh, uh, 
this is a credit card. Is this a credit card? Yeah, I think it's a credit card. But I pay that off on a regular basis. No, this is cryptocurrencies. There you go. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I got to get these colors a little bit more distinct. But with these cryptocurrencies right here, I sold off a lot, took money off the table, and have actually put some money um, in terms of just dry powder and cashed it out, waiting for a market downturn so I can fund and rebalance my Roth IRA and my general uh my general investing portfolio. So this is just all just just the assets alone. So it's not as confusing as this with all these different lines and colors where I confuse my damn self. Looks pretty though. Um, so this is uh, looking at the same period or the same time period where everything ends uh, around February. To, um, the, I, I pretty much project everything out. So this line or this point where it ends is currently where I'm at. But we can see the same thing here for the same time period. And we see things slowly go up. And this is this line here, this orange line is my or are my total assets or is the line um, tracking my total assets. So we can see that, you know, I slowly built up, dropped a little bit. The market also dropped in these during these times. And then I started to build up a little bit more. Tesla started to doing better, started doing better as a stock. Cryptocurrency started to come back up as well. I sold off a little bit around here because I had to fund the closing for my home. Um, and then as slowly, I was just like, dang, I lost that money, what have you. But um, slowly we're seeing where this is coming back up. So if we look at the equity, even in my home right now, if I was to sell it at what it was appraised for, which you don't always get, you don't always do. Um, but if I was to sell it for what it was appraised for, um, you're looking at another 20 something thousand dollars added to this actual valuation. Um, and that would be in a, in a sense, my net worth or um, a portion, uh, a way of calculating my net worth or sorry the the asset side of my net worth uh when you add factor in the li liabilities it actually takes that down quite a bit which is another side of it getting this red line here to zero and that's kind of my next focus is getting this red line to zero taking this out totally so that i can actually consider this hey this is a positive it is not currently a positive if i liquidated it all it would be better um, in terms of uh, getting rid of the debt, but I want to keep these assets because they are making me money and they are going into them and they do have a purpose in terms of funding my MGTOW retirement as well as possibly adding, um, acting as a cushion if anything happens with my employment that I can cash out some of these actual assets. And that's what we have to do as MGTOWs is we have to make sure that we put ourselves in the, the best position to protect what we have and making sure that we, um, you know, we continue on uh, in uh, it was in our MGTOW lives. Um, there's a little bit more to it, of course. Uh, if I was to, there's other portions of the spreadsheet, but it's not showing up right now. Um, but this is kind of the thing that we want to focus on is building up, um, building up our assets to the point where we can actually take this type of money. Again, this is this is all from just like one year. This hasn't even been a year yet. February 24th, 19, uh, 2019, 2019 is when I actually started investing all the way up until now. Now I was in cryptocurrencies beforehand, but in terms of the general stock market, which is where most of my money is, which is this light orange line here, that's about 24 grand, 25 grand almost. That's between my Roth IRA and my personal, my general investing portfolio. Now I wanna get, I wanna put more into cryptocurrencies, but again, saving up money, putting money aside uh, to take advantage of, you know, market uh, turndowns and um, getting, uh, getting more bang for my buck in the long run. Alrighty, um, still, I'm trying to make these videos a little bit shorter, so me combining this with the other portion of the video, it's going to make it kind of long, and I do want to go into the next section, which is the uh, steel metal building, um, and I have a short video for that, so stay tuned. Thank you. Bye. Alright, so it's this nice Saturday. I'm out here steel metal building shopping. Uh, just got a little bit of a quote here. want a building probably about this height, which is 9 feet. But this size, which is 30 by 41, uh, yeah, 30 by 41, I think. Um, but this is 14 feet tall, 
but it's going to be that height is what I'm really looking for. Probably have two garages on it or something like that. Two garage doors and a concrete slab. But I'm kind of liking this. So essentially, I want to build a shop of some sort that I can, uh, you know, put equipment in and do some storage. And then also even put my vehicle in or a vehicle later on, uh, have a shop. And the nice thing about this, uh, from what the guy said, is that a lot of these buildings, so this is a nine foot height, which is kind of what I'm looking for. Uh, I don't think I need much more than that right now. And then, of course, I would get some glass or get some windows put in so that I can look. Uh, this would overlook the lake. But um, I will get a, bu a building like this, probably have storage in a corner or something like that piled up, and then have uh, tables or a bench to where I can actually do work on my weapons and do work on some of my other projects that I have going on. Uh, something about kind of what I want is gonna cost about 13 grand, he said. Yeah, probably about 13 grand or so, uh, just for the building and installation included in that pricing. And then for the concrete slab itself, so this is a 30 by 41 by 14. So for concrete slab for building this size with no rebar, that's not necessary, I guess, for uh, buildings in Southeast Georgia. But a uh, building like this, the concrete slab is about 52, 51, 5300, another $900 and I can put rebar in it um, just if I want that type of overkill. But yeah, I kind of like this. This is a 14 foot tall building. I don't need anything that big or in terms of height, but I wanted to make this quick video, you know, just in terms of getting things that would not so much improve your life, but using the land and everything that you have, you know, um, start to build out, enjoy the space that you, that you're going to be living in for a long period of time, getting into hobbies as you get a little bit older. Uh, it's not just about finances in terms of MGTOW retirement. It's also about enjoying that life that you have, um, whether you choose to, you know, whenever you get to that point, um, but whether you choose to live it lonely all the time, or if you have one or two chicks every so often or something, however you choose to live in your MGTOW retirement, if you will, um, building things that will be there you know, when that time comes. So, something like this is pretty nice. Gonna do a little bit more looking around and uh, actually just inspect this building, see how it feels. And something like this, you know, you get some insulation put in, put some wood, uh, you know, some wood on the side and everything like that so you can hang stuff in it. Uh, probably even get, build out a little, even a little office you know, probably like cut that out, put a little office, put a heater in there, and you could just have that heated space, especially in the winter, so you can still do work. So yeah, and I'll probably build something like this pretty close to my house. Um, I probably built something like this pretty close to the house, so that I can actually, <clears throat> what's it called, run internet and power out to it. So, and it's gonna be a lot cheaper that way. <laughs> So I got to think about all that. But yeah, I like it. Alrighty, that's it for this video. Real quick, wanted to show this. And, you know, just show off that some of the things that, you know, hey, when you get, when you're thinking about this lifestyle, planning for things like hobbies, planning for um, making improvements that will improve the rest portion of your life in terms of, what you're doing and how you want to operate on a regular basis. Anyways, enough talking. This would be one of my shorter videos. Alrighty, have a nice one. Peace.